somehow this is poetry to me, this phrase, right? It's like just the way that he said it. He lives forever by his divine instructions and the follower lives with him. Hmm. Right. He lives forever by his divine instructions. This idea that through instructions, a great soul can live forever. Hmm. Um, and that even when one, if we met, were nev never ever to meet one of these great souls in person, we can still know them through their instructions. That's a really wonderful portal, you know, to, to connecting with a, you know, sometimes we fantasize right away. If you could have dinner with one person from the past, you know, who would it be? We're, we're what, what's being said here is you can actually know these great souls mm. through their instructions. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Live from Super Soul Farm, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily spiritual podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York City, Kastuba Das. Welcome to the show. It's Monday, episode 1481. Today is December 2nd, 2024. In case you were don't know where you are or what time it is. Uh, if, in case you were like abducted by aliens, just like, where am I? I'm in a field. Well, it's... Uh, December going 2nd, back in time. Where, that's where it is. <laughs> My name is Raghunath. I'm an ancient alien theorist, part-time botanist, mixed martial artist enthusiast. And uh, what else have I? And mystic. Not, not even part-time. I'd say a full-time mystic. Me and Mara watched a movie. Might have been the first movie we've ever watched as a couple yesterday, right? <laughs> yeah, Isn't that interesting? <laughs> Usually that's like the centerpiece of... People's coupleship is we go to the movie. We've never we've never been out to the we've movies. <laughs> ever gone to the movies? Um, we uh saw Seven Years in Tibet. Did you fall asleep through part of no, it? No, I didn't. Usually I do, especially that slow dragon movie. I should have. <laughs> I stayed awake and was hoping for a little bit more action. <laughs> anyway, never see that movie, Kristen. No, I think you're about. I don't want to get. It's not. I don't even want to share. You didn't actually. He fell asleep. <laughs> I did it. It was a guy. Uh, 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 it was right before World War Two, and they were this. This guy was trying to uh, climb Mount Everest, and I to thought it was Everest actually. They was, said it was in the Himalayas, but I think it was Everest. Oh, was it? And and anyway, he was trying to do it for his nation and the new Nazi Party to, you know, because it's, uh, it's like a sort of a national uh, win. And um, while they were up there, the, the, we went to war and the British police arrested him and put them in all the climbers in this holding camp. And then he was just sort of stuck. He kept on trying to escape. And Tibet. eventually he, he somehow buddied up with the Dalai Lama. Maybe I did fall asleep. Or I think you may have slept through part of it in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of it like was, everything. It was beginning. a little sleep worthy, but um, <laughs> just coming from Nepal and, and and just seeing that culture up there, I was just like, uh, I just was sort of drawn to watching it. Anyway, all right. Uh, how and uh, yeah, how are you? I'm doing great. Good. Yeah. No, nothing new. Nothing exciting to oh, share. Yeah, you know, everything's exciting. Um, I've been wandering. I've been roaming, Robin. I've been roaming. You know, roaming the dog. Where'd you roam to? You roam out of your room? You roam out of your room? Well, yeah. What do you think? I'm just roaming around. around my room? No, I'm going outside. I'm roaming. Where? Where? All over the, the, the wherever my feet can carry me around here. But I'm, I'm finding special abandoned trails and secret roads and paths. Huh. It's a lot of here that I've never really explored, you know? Some beautiful places. Oh, that's nice. And they're really good places to chill. You know, you go in the morning as the sun's rising. It's really nice. I'll show. I'll send you some photos. Okay. Some of them are really just right around the corner, and boom, you're out in the middle of the fields. You know, mm. you can just yeah, and nobody's there. 
Like everybody else is chanting in the job, you know, chanting Japa in the temple room. I'm out here in nature. You know, like I feel, I feel like, I feel like it's like, you know, like this is what Jagannath Das Babi, he was chanting like, it was like this, you know? Yeah. He wasn't chanting to a massive temple. No, he was right Just out there walking, in the fields probably. Walking right? through the fields. Yeah. With the jackals and the birds. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's what <laughs> I've been up to. Immediately, I mean, Brett Sindri Radha wrote on the message board, careful of the jackals. I think the oh, they jackals, come out at night. They're night. They're night. Uh, yeah. Nocturnal. And kind of, unless you're dogs. like almost dead or something, they're not going <laughs> to. They're going to run away from you. Right? Or I guess a they might of, pack. A unless they're starving and get attacked by a pack of jackals. Yeah, that would be not nice. Uh, Sometimes we, I go uh, all the way over to the Jalungi River. I've been meeting some nice Bengali Vaishnava people out there, getting up, going to the river, getting some water for their puja. They don't speak English, but they're just, you know, those kind of people that they live on the bank of the Jalungi River. Yeah. They work, do their seva and they I, and, and they do their sadhana. And when you meet them, they're just full of, like, happiness, you know? Even though they don't speak the language, they're just like, Hari Bo! And you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, some of those kind of people. Caught up in the worries of this world. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, anything up with us, Mara? You want to share with him? Uh, can I make some announcements? That work. <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure, man. It's first of all, it's Merch Monday. Yeah, <laughs> help us promote the show by wearing your Wisdom of the Sages merch. Take a picture, share it on Facebook and Instagram, and we'll share it. And also, we've got a holiday sale that starts today. Ah. Yeah, so we're offering 20% off all the merch in our store, and we have two new hoodie colors dropping for pre sale later this week. Oh, what color? I don't want to spoil the surprise. Now everybody's going to wait till later this week. Yeah. I mean, you can't go and order something until you see those new colors, right? Well, we didn't get Tim O'Reilly's uh, jacket last week. I don't think he. We we, we need to, we need a post. Oh yeah. yeah, Tim O'Reilly. Cool. Don't you have Instagram? Just take a Maybe snapshot. Maybe he's not on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, do we want to say anything about um, episode fifteen hundreds around the corner for us? Episode fifteen hundreds around the corner, right? Um, so that that means. We, it's a day that we're going to unmute a bunch of people and we're going to hear their story about how the Bhagavatam has sort of changed their life. Uh, how adding Bhagavatam, where they were at, how they got into this, were they spiritual, were they complete materialists, how the Bhagavatam came into their life and hearing it on a regular basis, how it's changed them. So if you have a good story and you want to share it, email Tamara at wisdomofthesages108 at gmail.com, and then we'll either read it if you're an other out there, but if you like to be on the show, we'll unmute you, and you can tell your story. And people find that super inspiring. I think we did that on episode, like, 700 or something. No, like that was episode 500, so now we're 1,000 episodes past that. After that? Yeah. Oh my God. Time flies. Yeah, and that was a great episode. But that was a two-hour episode. So we have to be prepared to do like two hours. Well, whatever. Let's just put it out there. Maybe only four people write us. Maybe no one's inspired. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Maybe no one's just, they just do it out of, they just watch this out of duty or shame. <laughs> oh, we did it in 1300 also, says Timothy Tucker. Also, also I've got an announcement. This is the last day. It's Cyber Monday. If you want to get my books, you can buy a box from me at cost and I'll ship them anywhere you want. Um, and uh, yeah, that way you do all your Christmas shopping. You buy the punk to monk book written my memoir, my story. And uh, it's just a way of me getting out this message of transcendence it's told through my life. Um, my, whole, my, my, <laughs> the whole thing. No, it's, it's a me offering. I get nothing okay, from this. All right, all right. I'm, not, I'm not getting a royalty or nothing. They could, they could open a little bookstore and sell them for retail price. <laughs> oh, Henry says it's a great book. So anyway, if you want to do that, email Mara, wisdom of the sages, one away at gmail.com. I think it comes out to 1950 per book, which is $34 retail. And, uh, yeah, you got to buy them there in cases of 10. So today is the last day to do that if you're interested. Okay. I'll give you eighteen fifty for it. You can't. I'm not taking less than I'm paying for them. <laughs> it's just that's as high as I'm going. You can get a free one. <laughs> okay. You just I don't did read it. You're like, Thank I'm too busy. I'm too busy. I'm too busy. You told me you're going to give me a free audio 
thing. I can't give away audio things, man. <laughs> well, you told me you were. How am I supposed to give that? Why did you make that promise? What do you want to subscribe to Audible for you? Come on. No, I'm subscribed. I have an Audible th account. I think you give Can we give him a free one? Yeah. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll give that to Kastuba. There we go. Really? So yeah, make it happen. There you go. Are you going to listen positive. to it? No, I'm give it to, to it. unless he commits to listening to it. I'm committing. I'm He's committing. committed. <laughs> he just said it in front of all our listeners. All right. I'm looking forward to it. Every time I get upset with you today, I have my Nepalese yak bell. I'm going to ring. You got a. Okay. Right. You got a cowbell. <laughs> Let's and start this bell. show. It's getting too. <laughs> okay. Get us started, Rena. I'm already upset. Why are you upset? I don't know. I just so you moody. were a little you were a little moody the last show you did. You had a whole day off in between. You're a little on the edge. We gotta break this open. Come on, Bubba Ganoush. <laughs> <laughs> he on. just can't be mad at you when you say Bubba Ganoush. <laughs> Come on, Bubba Ganoush. Part. Come on, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. There we go. Okay, here's I'll our nugget. Work my for way today. right into your soft little thumper there. <laughs> here's my nugget today. Who's it from? It's from Maya Angelou. Oh yes. Want to share something about Maya Angelou? Well, she's a poet. I, I I'd imagine she's won like those big awards that a poet really pulled surprises. I'm not positive about that, but that means you know nothing, do you? Mara, tell us about my aunt. <laughs> oh, man, that was cold. <laughs> Got it right there. Imagine she's a poet that won a prize. She wrote The Color Purple. Yeah. And I know why the cage bird sings. I think it's her most And I know famous. why the cage bird And are these po poetry? Is this poetry? Well, those Come are... That, uh... that was a memoir. Okay, so let's hear. Let's hear. All right. She's an American memoirist, poet, and civil rights activist. She published she seven. Was a poet, okay. She published seven <laughs> autobiographies, three books of essays. Wait a second, seven, seven autobiographies. <laughs> she had an interesting life. It must have been. I like worked hard to drag all this. Stuff. Maybe they were really small. <laughs> <laughs> seven autobiographies. Here's another facet of my life. She also wrote several books of poetry and is credited with a list of plays, movies, and television shows spanning wow. over fifty years. She's received more than 50 honorary degrees and dozens of awards. Okay. Pulitzer, Pulitzer Prize? Kustuba. That was a very uh, educated guess. Let's see. Yeah. Anyway, we've had enough. Something about it. Very impressive. It's like, it's like, how do you have time to live if you're writing down everything you're doing? <laughs> Seven times. You know what I mean? Yeah. Some people must just be so easy for them to write their gifts. Oh, her honors do include a Pulitzer Prize nomination for her book of poetry, a, a Tony yeah. Award nomination for her role in the 1973 play, Look I'll Away. She has three Grammys for her spoken word albums. Spoken oh. word albums. She was awarded the Spring Iron Medal, the National Medal of Arts, and the Presidential Medal of Freedom. I want you to win at least one of those, Rona. If you support my book... Maybe I will. Give it to me. I'm going to listen to it. If you support it, if you're like, this is a great book, then maybe I'll write I've a said se that. second, third, or fourth autobiography. I've said that even on this show. I just said it a few minutes ago. Okay. All right. So here's what she says. Yeah. A great soul serves everyone all the time. A great soul never dies. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Great soul serves everyone all the time. That means... To me, when I hear that, it's every action a great soul is doing has some aus auspicious effect. Sure. Auspicious result. And a great soul never dies, meaning their life becomes an example that we talk about on a regular basis, that we that's refer to, idea. that becomes sort of an archetype almost. That's how, yeah. I, that's how I take that. A great it's I, I like how we say a great soul because great soul what we say mahatma you know that's a, a direct translation a maha atma great and soul. In, in the vedic teachings there are here's a trivia question hot seat for mara name the famous great souls hmm? how many of them are there 12 good job oh you're okay. talking about the mahajanas the mahajan same thing mahajan means the great personalities the great yeah beings you want to name a couple oh, it's been a while um <laughs> it's been a while you're gonna have to dig four deep. kumars yep that they count as one. one for some yeah. reason they count as one go ahead brahma two 
good. Um, Janak? Janak, yeah. It's Sita's father. Great soul. Um, Prahlad? Prahlad, yes. Great soul. Okay. Uh, let's see. I used to know all 12 of these. You got four right now. Bijma? Yes. Bijma is good. Maha, Mahajan. Um, four more. Four more. Narada Muni? Yeah. Okay. Uh, nobody on the chat board's helping me. I thought no, that was yeah. 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 <laughs> This is what we do on Christmas. We play these type uh, of games. Kapila. Kapila. Boom. Swine Buva Manu. Swine Buva Manu. Well, she could go Swami. She could go Swami. That's nine. Thank you, Isabel. It's still, you can jump in at any point. Bali Maharaj. Bali Maharaj, good. Thank, Thank you, Dinesh. Dinesh. Come on, message board. Two more. Two more. Uh, yeah, you just uh, um uh you just, your father. I said Oh I Yamaraj. Said, uh, Yamaraj. Yep. It's eleven. It's stupid, isn't it? I think we got the Manu. Yep, we got Yamaraj. Yeah. yeah. You got Swine Boba Manu? Yeah. yeah. We're missing somebody. We're just missing one. Anyway, that's pretty that's good. That's the way it works. You always miss one. <laughs> that's that's pretty good. All right. It, okay, it, so great souls. What? <laughs> that's where you, that's why you brought that up. You're saying there are these great yeah, souls uh, like the Mahadev. Oh yeah, uh, Lord Shiva, I think. <laughs> we're, we're we're reading this thing from Maya Angelou. Yeah, so great souls. So this idea of a great soul, it's part of. She said this phrase: "A great soul serves everyone all the time." All the time. We also say that that this this idea of a Mahajan or a Mahatma. It's almost like a direct translation of a yeah. great soul. And it's a big. It's part of the fabric of Vedic thought that there are these people that are archetypes of doing what's right the new dharma mm -hmm. and what is it they, they serve everyone all the time to the highest degree right yeah i was i was thinking there's uh you know in one sense what she's saying there's a truth to it and i think the truth has an even deeper application when we're talking about deeply deeply spiritual people that have i don't know represented spirituality very well, right? Like um, Prabhupada, in the actually in the uh, dedication of his Bhagavatam, mm. he phrased his own um, appreciation for his guru Shila Bhakti Sananta Saraswati Thakur. Right? This yeah. is how it reads his his dedication to Srila Prabhupada Bhakti Sananta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj, and then he writes in all capital letters, "My spiritual master." Mm. Interesting, right? <laughs> All caps. It's like almost oh like he understood that email was going to come, and then <laughs> right. he write something in all caps. It's like saying it loud. Yeah, my spiritual. Master. Isn't that weird? Like that? How did that come about? If you write all caps, it means you're screaming it. Who st who started that? I don't know, Rogan. But is that crazy? I like, like all of a sudden now everybody accepts that. That's what that means. It's interesting to try to wonder exactly what Srila Prabhupada, what he was feeling when he did that. But he wrote in all Maybe caps, same my type of thing. master. Maybe the same type of thing. Yeah, probably. Then he wrote, on the 26th annual ceremony of his disappearance day. And then he wrote this. This phrase, somehow this is poetry to me, this phrase, right? It's like just the way that he said it. He lives forever by his divine instructions and the follower lives with him. Hmm. All right. He lives forever by his divine instructions. This idea that through instructions, a great soul can live forever. Hmm. Um, and that even when one, if we were nev never ever to meet one of these great souls in person, we can still know them through their instructions. That's a really wonderful portal, you know, to, to connecting mm -hmm. with a, you know, sometimes we fantasize right away. If you could have dinner with one person from the past, you know, who would it be? We're, we're what what's being said here is you can actually know these great souls mm. through their instructions. Um, of course, Bhakti Vinod Thakur wrote. You know, he he reasons ill. <laughs> who says? Again, more poetry, right? He reasons yeah. ill. He he reasons ill. He, who says that Vaishnavas die? They don't die. He's saying right. But yeah. they are living still in sound, right? Whatever instructions they gave, that sound still exists. It hasn't died. And and that's the real connection to them. More than more than seeing their body in front of you. 
is the instructions that come from their pure heart and from their pure mind, you know, through their pure mind. That is actually associating with them in a way that's more meaningful than associating with them physically present. Mm. Yeah. It probably, I like that. Yeah, he, you know, he, he also, this, here's a little statement from Shul Prabhupada. This is a letter that he wrote. I think a disciple was writing to him and saying, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of alone here and I'm kind of struggling, you know. And um, I, perhaps in the letter he showed some sympathy, but then he gets, then he takes it here, you know, and he says, what is this alone? Now, this is coming from the mind of a, of someone that's deeply spiritual realized, right? What is well, this like alone? That. What is this alone? What is this alone? Vaishnava is never alone. When I first came to the United States, I was seemingly alone for one year, right? Here he was broke, no money, no assistance. Nobody knew what he was into or really understood him. He had a big mission and nobody was getting behind him. He was kind of like putting, putting everything on the line, <laughs> you know, sort of financially a, yeah. in terms of his own health, um, yeah. you know, living in New York all alone with, with no, with, with nothing. He said, but when I first came to the United States, I was seemingly alone for one year, but I never felt alone. I always felt the presence of my guru Maharaj. Myself, I was cooking. I was printing books. I was selling books, everything seemingly alone, but I did not lose my determination. Actually, you should know this. You are never alone. We can, you know, here, here's, a, here's a nice idea, right, Ragnar? Everyone spend, what, today's Monday, right? Yeah. Maybe by the end of the week, make, make, make it a thing. I want to get to know some Mahatma, some great soul, you know, from, from these texts. You know, it could be any one of the 12 Mahajans you just mentioned. It could be Srila Prabhupada himself. Spend some time hearing their instructions and see if you can feel their presence in your life in a deeper way that's the, that's how these great devotees actually felt right like mm. they had access we, we have to go deeper don't we yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah yes you do you have to say it a little louder if anyone's gonna yes you it. do you have to go <laughs> deeper you. Chris Duba. <laughs> thank you I sit alone every morning. As soon as I wake up. I but do you feel alone? Huh? But do you feel alone? I don't feel alone. Because? Elaborate. Because I'm, because I'm sitting in meditation on Radharani. Oh. I mean, just sit there. The whole world is still. How do you meditate on Radharani? Like this is, this is something I can't share with. Do tell. <laughs> <laughs> you surrender to me. I'll tell you my meditation. Uh, I I read something really nice from Srila Prabhupada about Radharani just the other day. Yeah, tell me. I noted it down. I kept it close. Mm. Would you like to hear it? It may enhance your sure. meditation. Sure. It yeah, I do. A, was... I, but before I start my day, that's how I start my day. I sit there in bed. In and bed? Get in Radharani. Okay, beautiful. Yeah. So Prabhupada, this was from a lecture that he gave in London in, I think it was 1973, on Radhastami, on the birthday of Radharani. Okay. And he's, he was saying, should I pull it up? I can probably uh, find you, it. Yeah. Keep talking for a little bit. All right. Um, yeah, <laughs> you don't know who Radharani is. She's the origin of all feminine, uh, all feminine deities. She's the original. And she's Krishna's consort. Radha. Okay, I'm almost I'm almost there, Rana. Bear with me just a minute. It's so nice that it's worth my pulling up and reading. She got it. I think I got it. Oh yeah, got it. Okay. This may sound like a simple thing, but the more I thought about it, the more I said, this is everything. <laughs> like, this is our whole path. This is our, this is our way to developing Krishna consciousness and freeing ourselves of unlimited lifetimes of bondage. Okay. Right, now, one, now I'm very eager, please. He says, 
first you have to worship Radharani. Okay. If you go through Radharani, he didn't complete that sentence, but if you go through Radharani, therefore, in Vrindavan you will see all devotees. They will address one another. Jai Radhe. Jai Radhe. S still, because they know that if Radharani is pleased, if I can please Radharani, Radharani is presented the original pleasure potency, always absorbed in thought of Krishna. So anyone who comes before Radharani to serve Krishna, oh, she becomes so pleased. Oh, here is a devotee of Krishna. She immediately recommends Krishna. Oh, here is a devotee. He is better than me. This is Radharani. I may be a not devotee. I may be most fallen rascal. But if I try to reach Krishna through Radharani, then my business is successful. Very interesting, right? You really take that in. Here's Prabhupada mm. living through his instruction, right? Therefore, we should worship Radharani first. That is our business. Instead of offering directly one flower to Krishna, you just put it in the hands of Radharani. My mother, mm. Radharani, Jaganmata, right? Mother of the universe. If you kindly take this flower and offer it to Krishna, oh, Radharani says, oh, you have brought a flower? Krishna said, Patram Pushpam Palam Toyam Yome Bhakti Prajati. When if one offers me a leaf, a flower, a fruit, or water, I will accept it. But don't try to offer Krishna directly. Just offer through Radharani. It'll be very much appreciated by Radharani. So this is our philosophy. To please Krishna through Radharani. And just today is the auspicious day of Radharani's appearance. And so if we offer Pushpanjali, if we offer flowers, and pray to Radharani that Radharani, kindly be merciful and tell me, tell about me to your Krishna, to your Krishna. Krishna is yours. Krishna, Radha Krishna. Krishna is not independent. Krishna is Radharani's property. Hmm. So you have to approach Krishna through Radharani. That is, today is the auspicious day. Worship Radharani very nicely and be happy. <laughs> hmm. But in one sense, you know, we've heard that, but... I've heard that kind of thing many times, but it struck me somehow, right? If we, if you have this very merciful manifestation that has Krishna entirely under control due to her love. Mm. And she's, her nature is that if she sees you coming to her uh, with any, even little desire to, be, to become a servant of Krishna, She's like, oh, look at this. This is great. <laughs> you know, I'm going to hook, hook this person up with Krishna. And even if you're not so pure, she just looks at, she looks at you and says, oh, no, no. This person's better than me. Even if you're the most fallen rascal, right? He says your business is successful. Mm. I thought that was nice, huh? Thank you for you like that? saving that. Take that in. I'll share it with you. You're yeah. quite a great at indexing things well i have a file on my computer Raghunath, it, and i just oh, yeah. call it collected thoughts okay right and any thought that i find that i want to collect I, I copy it i make a little uh document of it and i throw it in that file and i got a lot of great stuff in there my desktop on my computer is a mess <laughs> just like a, it's collected thoughts but they're just like ah, <laughs> scattered everywhere just come okay let's wait. let's read the bhagavatam sir it's going to Let's keep me on track today. Narayanam namaskritya naram chai vanaratamam devim saraswatim vyasam tato jayam madiriyat. Before we sign the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan, and to Narayan Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, and to Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and to Srila Vyasadev, the author. Nasta prayesha badreshu nityam bhagavat sevaya. Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti or Bhavati Naishtiki by regular attendance in class in the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotees. All that is troublesome to the heart will become eradicated. And loving service to the Supreme Lord who is praised with transcendental songs will be established as an irrevocable fact. Om Ajnana Tamarandasya Ajnana Janasalakaya Taksudan Madatam Jena Tazmai Shri Gurave Maha I was born in the darkness of ignorance. My teachers are opening my eyes. With the torchlight of knowledge, I offer my obeisances at their lotus feet. Reading from the Shema Bhagavatam, Canto 8, Chapter 16, Text 11. Okay, the Aditi recap. speaking, the mother 
of the demigods is speaking. Yeah. Um, Kasyapa Muni returned home after going, spending a long time in deep meditation. And you get home, you see your wife's not happy. That's not nice, right? She had all Are good kids. <laughs> yeah. What's that? She had all good kids. And then her sister had all bad kids. <laughs> yeah, in a sense. In a sense. But they were all Kasyapa's sons. Yeah. But yeah. um, so he began to ask, you know, what's what's the matter? She's not feeling well. He, and, he, and just because they loved each other, they could speak frankly with each other. And he said, maybe you did something wrong. Is that possible? Maybe you did this wrong. Maybe you didn't do that. Maybe you neglected something over here, your household duties, your dharma, your artha, right. your kama. You know, maybe somewhere in your dharma, you kind of slipped up. Maybe you didn't respect a guest that came to the home. Maybe that's why this kind of cloud of yeah. darkness is hanging over you. It could have been these things. And then he, he said, or maybe your sons. Could it have something to do with your sons? Maybe they're not doing right. well. Is, is that why? So now we're going to hear how she responds. She didn't get offended. Didn't take offense. She actually really has love and respect for her husband. You can hear in, in her response. And so now we're going to hear how Aditi, the mother of the devas, responds. Oh, my respected Brahmin husband. All is well with the Brahmins, the cows, religion, and and the welfare of other people. O oh, master of the house, three principles of Dharma are the Kama, flourish in household life, which is consequently full of good fortune. Okay, so she said all the things, that, you, that checklist that you just gave, you know. I got it. All, all is good. Check, check, it. check. And now she's going to say still more. O oh, beloved husband, the fires, the guests, the servants, the beggars are all being properly cared for by me. Because I always think of you, there is no possibility that any of the dharmic principles will be neglected. Okay, let's talk about this, Raghunath. I want to hear your thoughts on this too, right? On what? On this verse that she just said, she's okay, so she went further down the list, the fires. In, in other words, I've been doing the rituals in the home, right? We talked yeah. about that yesterday. It appears that a, a lady was performing Vedic sacrifices. It, there seems to be no indication that she had someone else doing it. It seems that she was doing it. Oh, that's right, okay. And then guests, the guests. We talked yeah, about the importance I, of serving guests. I was all over it. I was taking really good care of anybody that showed up at the door. The servants, beggars. you know, we got yep. people, if anyone, yeah. And servants were cared for, you know, and beggars. Anyone showed up begging for money, I, I, you know, properly reciprocated with them. All were cared for properly by me. And then she says this. Now, I think th this instruction that she gives right here, th this statement that she gives right here, she it appears that she sees her husband as her guru right mm. and so she meditates on him mm. even when he's absent she doesn't feel alone she feels his presence and and that memory of him that thinking of him that meditation on him brings out the best in her even if he's not there physically what does that look that you gave to me? What was that? What was that? What was... Are you thinking I should be meditating on you, Prabhu? So Are you meditating you... properly on me? I don't know. No, only if you consider me your guru. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you don't. Of course. That yeah, sounds course. sarcastic, but whatever. Hare Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna give you so, a Harry Krishna, meaning like. <laughs> <laughs> so she uses this phrase, Anu Dhyanan Narishyati. Anu means. You know, tiny. Oh, th there is like that, but it also means like to follow, right? Like das uh, anu das, yeah. the servant of yeah, the yeah. servant. Or, yeah, yeah. So, in so many ways, we use that anu. Anu dhyan, anu dhyanat. It means dhyana means meditation, right? Anu dhyana means like a constantly flowing meditation, a meditation that doesn't break. And she says, "I'm always thinking of you." You all, I'm never alone, right? She said, because I always think of you, there's no possibility that any of the dharmic principles will be neglected. That's a, you know, that's, that's, that's where a disciple's supposed to be, right? It's like the instructions of the guru live in their heart, right? He lives forever by his divine instructions and the follower, right? The person that's thinking of it, meditating on it, following it. That person is never alone. They live with him. 
And so she's she's saying quite frankly that this this anudhyana 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 there's this there's this phrase have you heard this before druv druvanu smriti mm -mm. it's i believe ramanuja used this term and i think other vedantins have used it but it means this non-stop uninterrupted favorable memory mm. that that it's always playing out in your mind and 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 I believe that um, I don't know if it was Ramanuja or not the great, great Acharya, great teacher. I believe it may have been him that said he was trying to help us understand, like what what can we think of to understand what this mindset is like, what the state of mind is like. Mm. And he said it's like pouring oil, like pouring something yeah. real thick, right? It's like there's no break in it. Like if you take thick oil and you pour it, it's smooth. And it glows and it's thick. It's not like splashing all over the place. What if you pour oil on an object, it doesn't splash off it. It just kind of like encompasses that object, right? And and, and fully, mm. fully thickly covers it. So our meditation has to be like that. She's saying that's what my meditation is. I, I don't know. I'm not only thinking you, I'm thinking of you deeply. And through my deep meditation on you, um, I, I because of that it brings out all that's good in me and therefore i'm not neglecting dharma in any way you know i'm i'm uh everything's covered she says um anudhyana narishiti therefore nothing is missed i'm on top of everything you know mm. oh yeah you know it's it's through these instructions right i was thinking of another um we mentioned this the other day what um that when Arjuna came back from Dwarka. Mm -hmm. He was late in coming back. Yudhishthira was, where's, where's Arjuna? Waiting for him, waiting for him. And then Yudhishthira began to see all kind of inauspicious omens. Started asking, what's going on? What's going on? Something are you bad a, happened? Were you not are taking you a good care reader of, of the omens? Do Am I a good reader read of the omens? Uh, yeah. You said you're a full-time mystic. Well, yes. I am. Yes, that's true. <laughs> that is true. Sometimes my reading omens uh, uh, proclivities are down. You know, just like the internet goes down. <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, yes, I can. I think I'm a pretty good reader of omens, Mara. Okay, so Yudhishthira was reading. Oh, definitely, absolutely. Um, Yudhishthira was picking up on all these inauspicious omens and thinking something must have gone wrong with Arjuna. Hmm. And then Arjuna came back, finally showed up, you could just look in his face, see how dejected he was. And he was dejected because Krishna had passed away, right? Mm. Um, his, you know, who's so dear to him. And, and, um, and Yudhish, so Yudhishthir went down the checklist, just like we heard here. And he said, you know, did you do this wrong? Did you do that wrong? Did you do this wrong? Did you do that wrong? And, uh, and then the last one was, or could it be that Krishna, your dear friend, is, has left us, has passed away. And so then Arjuna confirms that that's true. And then he, he begins to talk about how he's not the same man in certain ways, right? Like him being the hero Arjuna was all by Krishna's grace and everything that he had accomplished in his life, that he built, his, that his whole reputation was built on, that it was all Krishna. And he lost his powers. Yeah, yeah, he did. Krishna lost his powers right? when Krishna left the planet. Yeah. But but in the midst of that dejection and in the midst of that um, grief, he said this verse, and I think this verse is so important. And then he speaks a little bit about it. But he said, "This is um, Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, chapter fifteen, text twenty-seven. Arjuna answers after after again explaining how th he goes through his life with Krishna and, and how Krishna had saved him and empowered him in so many ways. But now he's gone." Mm. But he's but where's he gonna find solace? He says this now I am attracted to those instructions. What instructions? The Bhagavad Gita, right? Like how Krishna spoke to him on the battlefield. Now I, now I am attracted to those instructions imparted to me by the personality of Godhead Govinda, because they are impregnated with instructions for relieving the burning heart in all circumstances 
of time and space. Mm. Right. The, 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 you know, uh, of course, uh, Maya Angelou was saying, you know, that that a great soul serves everyone all the time. <laughs> right. And I think this is a, a deeper kind of understanding of that, that the instructions that he shared with Arjuna it's not like they were good for some time or good in some circumstances, good in some place, and then they're not good anymore. Krishna's present in those instructions at any time. And at any time, he could meditate on those instructions and not only know what to do, but it was as good as, in some ways, even better than Krishna being there personally. Mm. Pra Prabhupada said, you know, he used to say, um, the best of me is in my books. Right? Mm. If you want to know, he used to also say, if you want to know me, read my books. You know? So he continues, uh, Arjuna continues, he says, Sutta Goswami said, thus being deeply absorbed in thinking of the instructions of the Lord, which were imparted in the great intimacy of friendship. All of these phrases are just impregnated with meaning, you know, like this is the guru disciple relationship right it's not just like one person is the dominator and the other person is like the the peon no it's 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 a great there's a great intimacy of friendship even though one is like the superior and one is you know is you could say the um well inferior Jun the junior <laughs> or the apprentice yeah, yeah yeah that um but still there's an intimacy of friendship there sure. and that intimacy just it helps one become deeply absorbed. So thus being deeply absorbed in thinking of the instructions of the Lord, which were imparted in the great intimacy of friendship and thinking of his lotus feet, Arjuna's mind became pacified and free from all material contamination. Arjuna's constant remembrance, and it's the exact same phrase as used in the verse we're reading today, Anudhyana. Arjuna's constant remembrance of the lotus feet of Lord Sri Krishna rapidly increased his devotion and as a result, all the trash in his thoughts subsided. Because of the Lord's pastimes and activities and because of his absence, it appeared that Arjuna forgot the instructions left by the personality of Godhead. But factually, this is not the case. And he again became the Lord of his senses. Mm. Because of his possessing spiritual assets, you know, in the form of these instructions, the doubts of duality were completely cut off. Thus, he was freed from the three modes of material nature and placed in transcendence. There was no longer any chance of his becoming entangled in birth and death, for he was freed from material form. That mm. right there is a beautiful, in a nutshell, right, is a really nice encapsulation of how one is transformed through the practice of bhakti. You, you have to have this intimacy this friendship, you have to have these instructions that are, are pure and powerful and non-different, you know, from, from Krishna, non-different from the guru that gives them to you. You become deeply absorbed in them and, and um, your mind becomes pacified and free from all of its negative programming. Like it. Beautiful stuff, huh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> continue oh my lord since you are prajapati and are personally my instructor in the principles of dharma where is the possibility that all my desires will not be fulfilled it's got a lot of faith oh son of marichi oh son of marichi because of you because you are a great personality you are equal towards all the demons and the demigods right you're not playing favorites Right. Who are born either my from sons your... and the sons of my sister, right? Yeah. Um, who are born either from your body or from your mind, and who possess one or another of the three qualities: sattva guna, rajaguna, or tamaguna. Huh. We're talking about a virgin birth here, huh? Uh, in a sense, yeah. That's what it is. Call it what it yeah. is. Born <laughs> okay. of the mind or born. Mind born, born, born from, from the, the bodies. Mind is not virgin birth but but although the supreme personality of god had the supreme controller is equal towards all living entities he is especially favorable to the devotees okay so she's saying how do you understand I get that it. how can 
someone be favorable or how can someone be or this is the uh, ongoing question you hear in the Bhagavatam gets brought up again if someone's impartial why would they favor the devotees because like a mother a mother loves all their kids you say who do you love more me or my brother I say I love you all but at the same time the the, the child that's there's sometimes children who are much more affectionate to the parents and sometimes the other children just sort of back off. Some childs get thrown in prison. The mother loves them all and hoping that they'll all return to a healthy state of being. But you can develop a special affection with your mother as well. So in the same way, yeah, here you, is, you uh, it, right? the, yeah, yeah God loves all living beings. The pure devotee loves all living beings. Does, doesn't mean they'll treat them the same. But the, has full love for them, has no animosity towards them. Right. Everyone um, has that opportunity. It's not like they're going to, because of the way you look or where you were born or this reason or that reason, that you don't have the same opportunity for the same level of connection and intimacy. But some people, people take it and some don't. There's people that you will just not... What's the word? There's people in my life that I don't have anything bad against them. Um, but I maybe just don't like their behavior. And so I won't just let them, let them close to me. Oh, okay. But it's not because you don't like them. It's just because you don't like their behavior. The behavior you change, you let th you That's get the difference. Close. You don't condemn them. Devotees don't condemn other people. Condemn means this is what you are. You know why, Kastuba? Because you've always been like this, this and this is what you are and you're a no good. That's a condemnation where we feel like this person's broken from the inside. It's not like everybody's a pure soul. We just don't like your present behavior. It's not jiving with the flow, uh, divine flow. It's, you know, it's steeped in a little arrogance, whatever it, whatever it is, and you won't reciprocate with that. So you just step away from it. But as a as a person changes that attitude, you you welcome them back with whole with a whole heart. All right. So she's saying that um, she's beginning to hint, like you know. I understand that you love all your sons, including my sister's sons, the 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 Asuras. But those guys, <laughs> you know, they just they they're, they're not they they don't live good lives, mm. and my sons live such pure lives, and they're in trouble now. So even though they're all your sons, can't you do something to help my sons right now? Yeah. That's why I'm so dejected. You know. Therefore, most gentle Lord, kindly favor your maidservant. We have now been deprived of our opulence and residence by our competitors. The demons kindly give us protection. The demons, our formidably powerful enemies, have taken away our opulence, our beauty, our fame, and even our residence. Indeed, we have now been exiled and we are drowning in an ocean of trouble. O best of the sages, best of all those who grant auspicious benedictions, please consider our situation and bestow upon my sons the benedictions by which they can regain what they have lost. Okay. Might be a good stop. It's going to require there. strategy. Yeah. Do we end here today? Yeah, that's a good stopping point. Okay. Thank you, Reverend. Mara. Yes. You ready for some takeaways? <laughs> yes, my you lord. You angry with me because you <laughs> think I was sarcastic? You were sarcastic, and I'm not happy about it. I wasn't but being sarcastic. I don't think you, are, you are very sarcastic. You were being sarcastic publicly, but you know what? I'm going to let it go. Okay. <laughs> I didn't sense any sarcasm in it. You're not in tune with the omens okay. this mystic is. I Continue on. Full time mystic. A great soul serves everyone all the time. Yes. That was the that was the nugget, Mara. It's important. It's an important it's takeaway. Take a nugget can be a takeaway. Really? Never heard that. <laughs> a nugget can be a takeaway? Okay. Sure, you can take a nugget away. That's the new not? rule? You guys are just making up the it's rules now so about me? <laughs> you are really getting a little ornery over hey, come here. Go on. Go on. No <laughs> great on, souls. Come on, Mr. Come on, Bubba Ganoush. <laughs> no great souls through their divine instructions. No. Don't oh, them. know them. Know them. Yeah. Okay. A Vaishnav is never alone. Yeah. That's a t-shirt, Raghu. Huh? Mug? Vaishnav is never alone. You'd wear that down the street. People are like, what? I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> we don't understand <laughs> this. 
Keep the guru's instructions in the heart. Okay. Okay. I'm with you all the time. Sacred literature relieves suffering in all circumstances and at all times. Nice. Okay. Practicing bhakti transforms us and pacifies and purifies the mind. Very good. Devotees don't condemn. Nope. So Raghunath, right there. Raghunath. And... Raghunath. <laughs> 2024. <laughs> and you got the music queued up, Kistu? No, I don't. Hold on. Well, I do have it, actually. Once, uh, go. Okay. And please, Radharani, to reach Krishna. Mm. Please, Radharani, to reach Krishna. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for all the grateful people in this world. Okay, Not right. the ungrateful people. I thought you were going to feel so good after your day off yesterday. I thought you were going to come back and be like, oh, chipper. Maybe a little too much, I was thinking. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, you can understand. <laughs> Who can't understand the multi multifaceted mind of Raghunath? It's true. 